So, um, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the uh, latest release of the um, Blueback Toolbox version 13. My name is Marco O'Brien from Blueback. I'll be your host today. Thank you all for your um, participation. So to start with just a quick note on today's session, we're using the GoToMeeting hosted presentation. You should see a panel like this. Uh, you can minimize the panel by clicking on the little red arrow. Click it again to bring the panel back. You can display the GoToMeeting session as a full screen or window via the view menu. By default, everyone is muted, so please submit any questions you have into the text dialog. Uh, and we'll share the questions at the end of the session. Um, finally, uh, the webinar is being recorded. You'll all be provided a link within 24 hours. Please feel free to distribute as you require. And this recording will also be posted on our website. So moving on to the agenda. Um, we'll start with a few PowerPoint slides by way of introduction. Firstly, I'll introduce the concept, the toolbox concept, uh, and how it provides a framework for rapid de development and incorporation of client-driven functionality. I'm actually going to include a review of the tools that went into both versions 12 and 13. So I'll run through a list of these tools um, in PowerPoint as well. We'll then share the majority of these in the demo. Uh, the demo will then take the majority of uh, the, the scheduled time we have. Following this, uh, I'll give you a quick review of the support system we have in place for those who are not already familiar with it. Let you know about the Toolbox Quick Guide, licensing, evaluations, and then we can share some of the Q&A um, that have come in. So the Toolbox is a set of functionality features not available in standard patrol. It's designed to accelerate and enhance your patrol experience and also maximize your patrol investment. All the features are based on requests from patrol users around the world, including our own consultancy team and SIS. These requests have been brought together by the software development team at Blueback using the Ocean Development Kit for Patrol. Our own platform called Lagoon sits within the Ocean platform. This allows us to rapidly develop patrol plugins to provide the user with a set of complementary tools within the familiarity of the patrol interface. So we now have seven toolboxes um, available, uh, geology and uh, uh, modeling and geophysics and reservoir engineering uh, form the core um, toolbox modules. There's also an inversion toolbox tied to our stochastic inversion plugin ESI. A seismic reservoir characterization workflow, uh, which is built within the toolbox framework. Uh, and also around Easter time this year, we will be releasing a new rock physics toolbox. The toolbox development framework has been designed and built in such a way that it allows us to rapidly develop tools, workflows, and processes upon a client's request. Examples include the upscaled logs you see for Dong Energy in Copenhagen, the frequency spectrum probe was a request from SIS, Tartan grinning from Noble, seismic attribute ranking from OMV, etc. So if there are any features you would like to see in the toolboxes that don't exist in standard patrol, any troublesome workarounds you currently employ, or academic concepts you would like developed in the patrol environment, then please get in touch with us on sales at bluebackreservoir.com. So just to give you a quick run through of the tools that went into the last two releases since uh, we last did a webinar on the toolbox. Um, so toolbox 12 saw an updated uh, interface. There's new filtering and searching options. Um, there's a policy administration tool, um, a track integration of a tracker database. So you can compare the contents of your project against uh, a recent tracker database. Um, so compare against other uh, user projects. There's a pressure gradient analysis tool, um, which we'll show you in the demo, create 3D completion cells in the RE toolbox, support loaded geotiffs, velocity manager, export functionality, um, and tools for searching the history and comments of uh, all objects in a project. Also, the seismic cutter or cookie cutter um, went into version 12. Version, version 13 um, saw set image coordinates. So this is um, a tool for uh, rotating and scaling an image to tie to two wells or two points, a scale bar in a 2D window, average seismic spectrum, spectral bluing, uh, which is part of the ESI and seismic as well characterization uh, toolboxes, project history overview, so this gives you a hierarchical view of all um, operations that have been executed within a project uh, throughout the, the history of the whole project, uh, tracker open spirit data. So again, this is integrating a tracker database and allows you to compare uh, open spirit data in your project against uh, the um, data recorded in a tracker database. We have a blueback home dialog, which I'll show you shortly. 
um, reference project tool support for our custom blueback domain objects uh, and support for Patrol 2012. Toolbox 13 also has this well test and simulation QC workflow, which is part of the RE toolbox. Um, so this allows you to import um, observed pressure data from a well test, uh, say for an, for an, an application like Sapphire, for example. Um, and then uh, there's tools and custom uh, rules to add it into development cases that allow you to uh, run an Eclipse model, generate bottom well pressure, and compare observed um, pressure data against um, simulated pressure data. We'll, we'll run through this in the, the demo. Okay, so let's jump into Patrol and take a look at the tools. So we're going to run through this demo um, in 2012. Since I last presented the webinar to you on Toolbox 11, uh, Blueback has gone through some rebranding, as I'm sure you've seen. As such, you can still access the toolbox um, from the old location, so the process pane, Blueback plugins, Blueback toolbox. Um, so we've also introduced a new icon here, uh, carrying an element of our new logo design, which gets you into Blueback Home. This contains not only all of the uh, toolbox tools, but additional tools for filtering, organizing, controlling, and creating quick access menus of your favorite toolbox tools. So uh, here we can see all the toolbox, uh, the core toolbox tools split by domain. So we have the geophysics toolbox. So this contains kind of 50 plus plugins, making for faster and easier seismic interpretation and analysis. Uh, tools include a frequency spectrum probe, amplitude balancing, seismic attribute ranking, folded seismic stacking, etc. The geology toolbox aims on speeding up and improving the various uh, geomodeling workflows. The reservoir engineering toolbox includes a water saturation process, tartan, an alternative tartan drilling uh, process, and various other tools for the reservoir engineer. The project management toolbox provides features for, uh, to keep projects um, clean, organized, and provides additional import export uh, format support. It's also possible to access the seismic inversion toolbox, which is a, which is a set of pre and post processing tools that come with our Earthworks stochastic uh, inversion plugin. This is the um, well test and simulation QC workflow, which is a workflow, as I mentioned, for comparing observed well pressure data um, uh, with bottom hole pressure calculated from the Eclipse model, which we'll run through uh, later in the demo. Lastly, we can access the seismic reservoir characterization workflow. So this is set of, a set of tools allowing you to calculate seismic net pay in reservoirs. Essentially, it lets you, lets you run through a workflow um, to run some EEI angle analysis, create an EEI volume, color invert to a limited impedance volume, and to calculate um, net pay. There's actually a recording um, specifically on this um, workflow or toolbox, uh, which is currently available on our website. So moving back to the top of the toolbox to Blueback Home. So within Blueback Home, it's possible to add your favorite tools to toolbars or menus for quick or quick access. So for example, if I sort of start to drag in um, various tools from the geophysics toolbox listing, sorry, I want to add to the toolbar. So again, sort of click and drag various tools from the geophysics toolbox. You can see I'm adding them here, but they're also appearing um, in this quick access uh, toolbar at the top. So if I close the toolbox, I can open in a standalone dialog the size and attribute ranking, um, for example. So the same thing uh, as you just saw, so toolbar, you can click and drag, uh, add into the toolbar tools, and they're added um, to this drop, blue, drop down uh, Blueback menu at the top. The final option is to add as context menu tools. Um, so when you make a selection of this point set, for example, I right click, I can see that I have set color, rename, edit comments, and set image coordinates um, added to the context menu for this particular object, which has been um, configured here within the home dialog. So there's also various um, new filtering options, so I can type in a grid, for example, and quickly filter tools that uh, to the tools that have grid, a grid string in the tool name. Um, we can also filter tools by input type, so what tools require a global well log as input. Same thing for output, so what tools give me a grid as output. 
Um, so that was a quick um, summary of uh, the recent changes that have gone into the toolbox interface and the new functionality within, within um, Blueback Home. OK, so moving on to um, a bit more demo. Uh, I plan to work down each toolbox in turn and show you the latest tools that went into uh, version 12 and 13. So starting in the geophysics toolbox, the three tools I need to show you um, are the Velocity Manager, Cut Seismic and Average Seismic Spectrum. So Velocity Manager Export um, is a tool for uh, exporting surfaces um, and well tops into uh, a format suitable for loading directly into um, Cambridge Petroleum Software's uh, Velocity Manager tool. So the dialog, we just select some wells, um, select some tops, select a set of surfaces. So here you see a summary table um, underneath. So for each well, you have the XY location, time and depth for the well pick for each corresponding surface. And this data is going to be written out into the CSV file and formatted correctly for loading directly into uh, Velocity Manager. Services will be written out to uh, ZMAP files. We also have a QC plot here. Um, so this is actually reusing some of the Geodata Investigator uh, engine, which is our cross-plotting uh, a new data analysis plugin for Patrol that we, we um, have on the Ocean Store. So this is reusing some of the basic um, functionality within GDI, so you can control which data is displayed quite easily, zoom and pan. Um, again, there's a bit more information on our website and a recording specifically on this data analysis tool, um, Geodata Investigator. Um, so back to the velocity manager, you click OK, it's going to write out some ZMAP format surface files and also your CSV data um, for plugging directly into velocity manager. The next tool to show you is the average seismic spectrum. So this tool allows you to calculate um, an average seismic spectrum as a frequency amplitude plot based on a pure average of each tray in a cube or defined region of cube. Um, so it allows you to quickly compare the frequency content between different surveys or vintages. Uh, it can be, be also be used to ex extract the corresponding statistical wavelets used in synthetic generation, for instance. Um, the spectrum object generated can also be used to build a tuning wedge in the seismic net pay workflow, which I'll show you. So if we can configure the dialog, so we just choose a quickly choose a, a volume from the dropdown. Um, if we're using input seismic, we can use it to constrain by inline and inline or cross line top and base surfaces or boundary polygons, for example. This tool can also be configured to use a spectrum probe object. Um, now, a spectrum probe is um, a custom domain object that's associated with our frequency spectrum uh, tool. So this is a tool in the geophysics toolbox that allows you to investigate the frequency um, uh, content of a, a particular survey or vintage. Um, so the way this works, you run in a probe. So this is the probe, this yellow box here and then uh, you open a frequency spectrum window and display a, a 2D FFT plot in the background here of the frequency um, content of the trace data within this particular probe. So this probe object here, so this sort of um, depth range and uh, lateral range across an inline can also be plugged into this um, average spectrum uh, dialog. So we click to update the plot um, so we have our average spectrum. It does very um, smoothing. Um, if you require, you can display the plot as decibels, and you can choose to output a spectrum and a wavelet. Uh, so we choose to pick a folder, we'll give it a name, and we'll just name the output. So this is the um, output, so we have our uh, wavelet object, and also our custom um, average spectrum uh, domain object. So as I mentioned, this can be added into the to build a tuning wedge in the net pay tool. So just to show you quickly, in the seismic reservoir characterization tool, one of the, the final processes in the workflow is to um, calculate net pay. So as part of that process, you need a tuning wedge, which can be um, built based on um, the average spectrum you just extracted. Um, generally, in this case, it's better to use a frequency spectrum uh, where possible or low frequency information can be lost when converting a frequency spectrum to a time series, i.e. wavelet. Okay, so the final tool to show you um, that's gone into the geophysics toolbox 
is the cut seismic tool. So this is a simple cookie cutter for seismic. It allows you to cut seismic by a license block, for example, um, or to select and cut out particular areas of a survey you wish to share with clients or partners when you may not necessarily want them to have the whole survey. In our implementation, uh, you end up with a reduced volume, not just the same volume, filled with dead traces outside the polygon that you're using to cut by. So it's just a simple case of selecting a volume, selecting a particular polygon. You can also cut um, in depth by a surface. Choose the name for the output. Um, so in this case, so here you can see the um, input volume and the yellow polygon we've cropped by. Uh, this is the output, so you can see it's been cut back um, vertically to the extent of the polygon. Uh, where it's not possible to, to crop, in this corner for example, it's been filled with uh, dead traces. But essentially it's been cut, cropped back all the way where possible um, to the lateral extent of the polygon. Okay, so moving on to the geology toolbox. A new tool that's gone into there is the scale bar in 2D window. So as you can see, this is um, an interactive tool, it says here. So what that means is, um, with the appropriate window open, which is a 2D window, and the toolbox active, um, you'll see a, a, the, the, um, the, the icon you need uh, appear in the toolbar. So here I can toggle to uh, add in a blueback scale bar. You can see it's been added down at the bottom here. It's also been added as a a node under the 2D um, window node. So I can double click to get to the settings. So you can see I can change the label size, um, the width of the bar, the position and the um, color for example. So you'll see it's as I zoom in it's currently set to a fixed um, length of pixels so you'll see the, the, the value uh, representing the length uh, changes at the zoom level changes. Um, if I come back into the options, I can also change this to be a fixed length, so 1000 meters for example. And then when I zoom, um, you can see the scale bar um, staying fixed at 1000 meters, again sort of adjusting to the zoom level. Um, in the next place, this is going to look a little bit more like a traditional scale bar, so kind of black and white. Well, the options to have it displayed as a black and white um, scale bar. Okay, so another new tool for the Geology Toolbox, um, which is also uh, available in the Project Management Toolbox, is Set Image Coordinates. So what this tool um, allows you to do is basically bring an image in, and then scale and rotate it and tie it to two points, so in this, as we're looking here, like two wells or two um, points. So in my input tree, I have a, um, I've imported a, just a JPEG file of you know, some coastline, a bit of basic bathymetry, and two um, uh, well symbols marked onto the, the image. So the way this works, I can drop the image into the dialog, and then choose which two pieces of data in my project I want to tie the um, image to. So I'm going to select well 2A and well 2B. So then I click to position the first point, um, you can zoom in on the image, click point one, and then click on this um, well position on the image here. Next I can click point two, so you can sort of zoom in as well and sort of continue to um, centralize the, the positioning as necessary. Uh, once that's done, you can set a depth, so minus 40 meters, click OK, uh, turn the image on. Now you can see that the um, image has been stretched and scaled um, and tied to the two um, uh, reference points we gave it. Um, as I mentioned, this can be wells or it can also be um, point objects. So moving on, um, we're going to look at the new tools in the Reservoir Engineering Toolbox. Um, first of all, we're going to look at this the Pressure Gradient Analysis Tool. So this is um, a new tool, as I mentioned, that's gone into the Reservoir Engineering Toolbox. It allows you to import and store pressure data in Patrol. 
you know, find the pressure gradients, fluid contacts, etc. Um, you can also um, uh, look for see if your comp reservoir is compartmentalized. You can sort of nest um, gradients by a segment or so. The tool simplifies the QC of pressure data by plotting it together with lithostatic hydrostatic gradients, uh, as well as converting the gradients to fluid densities. Uh, importantly, you can just do this in Petrona. You don't have to take your data uh, to an external package. So the first thing to do is to import your import your data. So there's just a, an ASCII loader here. Um, Find my data, bear with me, here we go. So I have um, just a flat ASCII file that's formatted well depth, pressure, pressure type, tool type and quality. Um, so we just need to plumb this into the um, ASCII reader. So column one is well name, depth is in column two, four, uh, pressure is in column three, pressure type column four, tool type five, quality six and then the last two columns we're going to set to null and you also specify which depth data you're bringing in tvd depth tvd kb or md so i click ok to bring the data in uh, so you can see it's been loaded into the plot window here down in this corner and um, we also have displayed our guidelines and um, so we have a hydrostatic lithostatic and mud gradient um, these could be are controlled by double click on the guideline object. I can set um, seabed, um, hydrostatic gradient, lithostatic gradient in a uh, piece like a foot. Also um, control how the mud gradient is displayed. So if I add in a legend to show you what we're looking at and zoom in on the data. So you can see we have our uh, points uh, plotted. They're colored by well and also have a different um, shape based on quality. So you can choose to color the data by any of the attributes you brought in and also um, uh, set the, the point shape by any of the attributes. And um, we can also filter as well by the attributes we've loaded. So for example, quality, we have some sort of data that's classified as unknown um, or poor quality. Maybe there's a tool failure or a little bit uncertain about the quality of the data that was uh, being received. So you can take those data points out. So we kind of isolated the data we want to work with. The way this works now is to fit the gradient lines to it. To do that, we need to add a gradient line folder. And just configure the, um, the gradient numbers. So I'm just going to plumb some data in here. Um, this is demo data. Okay, so the way the tool the dialog works now is to basically isolate the points you want to auto fit a gradient line to. So if I toggle to set points inactive, take out our uh, water gradient and what appears to be our oil gradient. I can then toggle here to create new gradient line based on the visible and active pressure points. It adds my um, gas gradient to the data. Like, same way I can sort of um, invert the selection take out the water data um, and again toggle to create a gradient line based on visible data which is going to give me my oil gradient um, so just turn these off a second we'll uh, set points active so we're going to set our water gradient active and um, take out our um, oil gradient. Let me try and bring these points in. And then again we can set a gradient, an auto fit gradient to the data we have displayed. Turn on the um, other gradients, we can see we have the intersections. We can then click these scissors to click the gradient lines and fluid contacts. So it's going to auto pick um, based on the intersection, the contacts. I come into the settings for the gradient lines. Uh, look at the statistics um, at the bottom. So we have our gas oil contact picked at minus 1981, oil water contact and a possible range of uncertainty based on a standard deviation factor that you configure in the, um, in the gradient dialog. Um, okay, so these data are also available in the input tree. 
So we have a pressure gradient, a custom domain object. So again, you can just click on the gradient lines, uh, read out, get to the same statistics down here. It's also possible to bring in a grid to filter the data by. So if I turn on my modeling grid, it then opens up the segment and zone filters. So you can filter the data if you have a compartmentalized reservoir by segment, for example, and have a sort of different sets of um, gradient lines built for different parts of the reservoir. OK, so that was the pressure gradient analysis tool in the reservoir engineering toolbox. Um, moving on to another new tool in the RE toolbox is this create completion cell property. So this is a simple tool for creating a discrete property, but in a grid where there is a well completion. This in turn allows you to filter the grid um, and show only those grid cells that intersect with the completion, then visualize other parameters, so cross dependabilities, um, that are in direct contact with the completion. So again, it's just a simple dialogue for selecting a grid. Um, choose a particular set of wells, perforation dates, and define an output. So here we can see in um, simulation grid, so it's built a property called completion cell, um, which is this, this data here. So you can see I have a discrete code um, for each um, completion in each well. Uh, you can see that the property is pink here, which means the grid is filtered by this property. So in the same window, uh, so the next window we have um, the grid filtered. Both, both windows are filtered by completion cell. But here we're displaying the um, porosity. So you can make a kind of visual QC in 3D of um, the petrical physical parameters in, in cells that are in direct um, um, in direct contact with the um, completions for each well. So again, moving on, but in the RE domain, um, I'm going to introduce a new toolbox-based RE workflow entitled Well Tester Simulation QC. This is um, a workflow that was developed by British Gas and implemented by Blueback. The workflow is presented as a suite of tools um, contained within the toolbox framework uh, and is, is included as part of the normal um, reservoir engineering toolbox license. The workflow has been constructed in such a way that well pressure test data um, from an application like Sophia can be compared to bottom hole pressure calculated by an eclipse model. This allows patrol models to be validated against known well pressures. Um, so obviously importing your pressure and derivative data um, can give you a lot of information um, about this type of reservoir, whether it's homogeneous, heterogeneous, uh, the shape, size, um, is it sealing, etc. So at the moment this only works for oil models and you also need an Eclipse license to be installed and um, for the uh, Eclipse simulation to be run. So the basic workflow runs through defining, defining perforation intervals, loading your pressure and derivative data, then using native processes um, for creating a grid refinement. We have a little bit of customization in development strategy, and then running a native, building a native simulation case, and uh, finally taking the output from the simulation case uh, and comparing that in a QC plot against your um, imported pressure and derivative data. So I'm just going to run through, run through this quickly. Uh, just to give you a flavor of what's in there. So the first step um, is to define your perforation intervals. So this can be done um, using the patrol well engineering process, well completion design tool, and then editing the perforation interval in the well section window. Alternatively, this new tool in this QC well test uh, workflow allows single or multiple perforated intervals to be created and edited and um, deleted. So if I toggle for this well, I have two existing perforation. Um, I can edit the start and end depth. I choose to quickly add in um, new perforations. If I toggle advanced mode as well, for each perforation, I can set a particular skin factor. And then based on the diameter of the completion, the minimum cell size uh, is auto-calculated to uh, accommodate the selected skin uh, value. You also have access to um, a calendar as well for defining the um, perforations. The next stage is to import your derivative data. So for the same well, um, I'm just find my file. There we go. 
So this is just um, a simple oscillator again. It's bringing in time and pressure and derivative um, again for this particular well. Click OK to load the data. Um, go and check well. So for the C2 well, I have a new folder called imported derivatives. Double click for the spreadsheet for the data that's been loaded and also QC plot to change the pressure change and derivative um, plotted uh, in this QC. Okay, so the next stage in the workflow is to use the native control process to create a local grid refinement around particular wells of interest. Um, again, the next step is to make a development strategy. And um, we've added in some, a little bit of customization to this. Um, so if we come to my simulation processes and development strategy. So we'll make and create a new one just to show you what's in here. So we have a new uh, simulator, so well test E100. This needs to be on prediction. We also have a custom uh, rule as well. Um, so for this to run, we need to add in a, a well rate production control rule. And also if you look down the bottom, um, there's this custom derivative time step rule. So the well pressure production control, uh, sorry for the C2 well, So it should be well rate production control. Uh, well rate production control. Yeah, so well rate production control for the C well. This needs to be um, the oil rate. Define a rate. And then for this derivative time step, uh, what it does is looks at the derivative data you've loaded. And um, then auto builds a time step. It uh, shows you a preview file here based on the um, time increment in the data that you've loaded. So you can basically then uh, um, generate data that so you can um, make a direct comparison against your obs observed data which you've loaded previously um, and generate data in the Eclipse model um, on the same time scale to make a direct comparison between your observed and uh, simulated pressures. Okay, so the next process in the workflow is to um, define a simulation case. Again, this is just using the native control process. Um, you only need to uh, generate well and pressure data. And also, because you're not really take, uh, generating much data, you can run with this uh, limited results only toggled on, which allows the simulation to run a little bit faster. So the final process is to take the, um, the QC, the data, so plot the data, the observed um, well test pressure data against the simulated data. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have um, an Eclipse license uh, or Eclipse installed, um, but it would list simulated cases here. You can overlay them directly and make a direct comparison between your observed and um, simulated pressure. I do have a slide just to show you what this would look like. So this is a derivative um, QC plot. So green, we have a typical um, uh, uh, pressure and derivative data from Sapphire. So observed well test pressures. And then in the background, in the pink and the sort of turquoise are various um, simulation cases and the bottom hole pressure calculated by Eclipse. Okay, so those are some uh, nice tools that have gone into the reservoir engineering toolbox. Um, last sort of domain to run through is the um, project management toolbox. So the first new tool that's gone into there is this um, uh, edit comments tool, sorry. So this basically allows you to make a selection of objects, drop them into the dialog, um, make some comments. In the dialog here you can choose to insert after, insert before, or overwrite the comments for these particular objects or you can choose to re replace a particular string um, in existing comments. So you can sort of standardize what you're adding to objects uh, in a bulk, um, a bulk set of objects to sort of make an easier handover of um, projects, for example. Um, the next tool is the search functionality. 
So this allows you to search for um, a particular text string in the name, the comments, or the history of all objects in a project. Um, or, sorry, in an entire project or selected objects if you've um, made a selection in the input tree. So this is my username. So it's returned all objects that have my username, you know, the name, the comments, or the history. Um, all these objects in this particular project. Um, there's various options for searching. Um, so you can search for sort of start of string, end of string, middle of string, etc. For each object returned, you can right click, um, get to the um, context menu for that particular object. That object is then also highlighted in the inventory. In this case, it's the demo um, simulation case, so it's just been picked up and highlighted in the input. Next tool is the project history overview. So this gives you a hierarchical overview of, overview of all operations executed on all objects in a project. So here you can see, you can list, make, make a, a hierarchical view and control how it's displayed. So you, the first sort of level is year, the next is day, then it's user, then name. So if I open up, for example, 2003, so I can see the Friday on um, 4th of July 2003, this user, Merit, um, edited a distribution function. So if I right click again, I can get to the contact menu, the particular distribution function is highlighted in the input tree. So again, just giving you a, um, a hierarchical view of all operations that have been executed on a particular project, broken down by year or user or month, etc. Okay, so the last three tools to show you um, in the demo and part of the project management toolbox are the Tracker Data Browser, Tracker Duplicated Seismic, and Tracker Open Spirit. Um, so these um, are providing integration with another of our products, the Blueback Project Tracker. I guess some of you are familiar with this already. Um, but in brief, the tracker is a tool for the data manager to manage and monitor all the patrol projects on a given network. The way the product works is there is a crawler that looks around the network for patrol projects, reference projects. For each project that is found, it's interrogated and information is aggregated in a SQL Server database. The data manager can then view all of this information through a specifically designed web interface. So these three tools allow the user to leverage information in that SQL database to compare the 3D seismic content with their projects against other user projects, see your local project data, and compare it against uh, the same data in other user projects, and also check data that's coming via OpenSpirit against the data source. So the first tool is this Tracker Data Browser. So the way it works, you need to connect to a, an existing Tracker database. So I have my server name, the database name, you need the appropriate authentication. You then just toggle to connect. The first thing you would do is check the scan date to see um, when the comparison you're looking at uh, was made in terms of the last um, or most recent tracker scan. So there's various tools for filtering. So for example, if I want to check a particular well log, um, so I can filter on well log and then porosity and a particular well. So here you can see the proxy log for A15. So my uh, the copy the version of the log I have in this project is newer um, than all the other occurrences um, that are currently seen by the tracker database. So I can right click, come to the project references, get to that table. Um, so I can see that um, all of the occurrences of this object are older in all the user projects. I can if I also want to right click, directly open this project in another patrol instance go and see um, perhaps why my object is uh, newer or older or more up to date than other occurrences of the same um, object. The next tool is the tracker duplicated seismic, again providing integration with the tracker database. It's the same thing, you need to connect to the tracker database, server name, database name, authentication, connect, check the scan date. So this is showing me that, um, for example, this cube here, there's five uh, exact duplicates of this um, of this uh, particular seismic cube. So that's the list of all the projects where this uh, there's an exact replica or duplicate of this particular piece of data. So again, I can right click, I can show the tabulate the details, see the um, uh, project path, the duplicated seismic file path when it was last modified. And again, if I want to, I can um, open the folder containing the 
Circuit Trial or Open Patrol, get into the project and, you know, uh, go and check the duplication. So I guess, you know, it's just providing uh, a little bit of you know, leveraging information in the tracker database by the user to make them aware of what kind of duplication of data there is between user projects and whether there, there's newer versions of the same uh, data object available. The final tool is the Tracker Open Spirit. So again, um, connected to a, a tracker database, it will then show you all of the objects you have in your project that have come in via Open Spirit. Um, the relevant Open Spirit project name, project type, and the Open Spirit last modified date. So you can see if the data you have in your project is perhaps um, a little bit out of date and you need to refresh your data source. Okay, so that's it for demo. Uh, I think we've overrun slightly. But um, as you can see, we've only touched on a very, very small percentage of the sort of 100 or so tools that are available across the four um, core toolboxes. Um, so as such, uh, I'd just like to draw your attention quickly to uh, what we, what's called the Toolbox Quick Guide. Um, so this is essentially an A5 booklet, which has an overview of all of the tools um, in all the toolboxes. It's available as a PDF download from our website. Uh, we also have uh, plenty of hard copy available, so if you'd like to receive a copy, um, please get in contact with us on sales at blueblackreservoir.com. Um, I'd also like to make you aware of the dedicated support system we have in place. Um, there's a support desk available on support at blueback-reservoir.com. And there's also an online support portal which has product forums, tips and tricks, release notices and updates, etc. Um, so if you're already a Toolbox user, um, please get registered. Uh, we're here to help. Um, licensing and evaluations. You'll find all of our software products, including the toolboxes, um, available on the Ocean Store, ocean.slb.com. There are various toolbox pricing models, the basic one being um, one toolbox for eight and a half, two for 14, three for 18, or four for $20,000. So when I say four, that could be four geophysics or two geology, two geophysics, for example. You can configure that how you choose. Um, also, the next step up, so if you want to sort of equip all of your patrol cores with a toolbox license, you can get 20 toolboxes for $30,000. That essentially makes it $1,500 per toolbox. There's also further discounts and pricing options available when you sort of uh, bundle the licenses together. And you can top the bundles up with our other products as well. Um, so please, if you want to find out more, uh, get in touch with us on sales at blueblackreservoir.com. Okay, just let me break out the questions, see if there were any. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, yeah, we currently support Toolbox, uh, current Toolbox release 13 is supported uh, for both Toolbox, uh, sorry, Patrol 2011 and Patrol 2012. Um, yeah, the well test and simulation QC workflow uh, currently only works on or for oil uh, models. But this will be um, extended to be able to uh, handle gas and gas condensate cases um, in the next toolbox release, which I think is currently scheduled for um, sort of around Easter time this year. Um, yes, all of the evaluations are free. Please get in contact with us. It's a very easy process to get the plugin installers to you and the licenses um, for however long you want, sort of two weeks or a month, whatever. Um, just to allow you to sort of dip in and out of the functionality whilst you kind of got patrol open in your um, during your day-to-day -day work. So yeah, please um, let us know if you would like to take a look. Uh, it's a very straightforward process. Um, I think that's it um, for questions. So um, yeah, so I think that's it for now. So thank you very much for your participation. Um, if you have any further questions, um, please send them through sales at blueback-reservoir.com. Um, thank you and goodbye.